chair recognizes the gentlewoman from Nevada. I thank the chair. Mr. Chairman, I rise today on behalf of Mr. Weiner, Mr. Crowley, Mr. Ferguson, and myself to offer an important amendment to cut off funding to the Saudi Arabian regime. Mr. Chairman, there are many reasons that we need not be sending foreign aid to Saudi Arabia. First, Saudi Arabia does not need our money. They're one of the wealthiest countries in the world with a GDP of over $286 billion a year. With poor countries begging us for help, why are we giving money to this oil-rich kingdom? Is not $60, $70, $80 a barrel enough? Second, Saudi Arabia exports and funds terrorists and terrorism. Need I remind anyone in this body that 15 of the 19 9-11 hijackers were Saudi. But the story goes on. By 2005, over 2,500 Saudi youths had entered Iraq to wage jihad against the Americans. That's waging jihad against us. By last month, 3,000 Saudis have been killed or captured in Iraq. Why are all these Saudis fighting in Iraq? Because their government is financing and teaching terrorism. Israeli officials believe that over half of Hamas's budget comes from Saudi Arabia. Just this week, two indictments were served against Saudi charities that are accused of funding Hamas. Their textbooks still teach Saudi children that Jews are apes, Christians are pigs, and that every other religion other than Islam is false. Their newspapers print anti-Semitic cartoons depicting the Jews as thieves and most insulting of all as Nazis. Already this year, our State Department has counted 14 human rights abuses in Saudi Arabia, including beatings, arbitrary arrests, violations of, of religious freedom and limitation on workers' rights. The Saudis are not our allies. They're not our friends. King Abdullah called our invasion of Iraq an illegal foreign occupation. That is not the words of a friend. Mr. Chairman, we cannot trust them and we should not fund them. That is why every year more and more members of this body vote to cut off funding to the terrorist regime. And yet, despite all this, the funding for Saudi Arabia has increased, let me repeat that, has increased each year because of an obscure loophole in the Foreign Assistance Act, up to $1.5 million in 2006. Well, this year we're closing that loophole. Our amendment will ensure that funding to Saudi Arabia is cut off once and for all. Enough is enough. Let's come to our senses and end this senseless promotion of terrorism. I urge support for the Wiener, Crowley, Ferguson, Berkeley Amendment, and I reserve the balance of my time. Who reserves the balance of our time? The gentleman, gentlewoman from, gentleman from Virginia is recognized. Uh, do I have the time or do I have to strike the requisite number of words? It takes time in opposition. Well, I don't, I'm not opposed, actually. I'm for the amendment, so I will just strike the requisite number of words. And recognize Mr. for five minutes. And I recognize Mr. Ferguson to speak on the amendment. I thank, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank uh, the gentleman from Virginia for the time, and I, of course, rise in strong support of this amendment. I'm delighted to, once again this year, work with uh, Mr. Weiner and Mr. Crowley and Ms. Berkeley. Uh, we've offered this amendment in the past, and... Uh, each year it, uh, uh, that this uh, uh, foreign operations bill includes funding for Saudi Arabia, we've offered this amendment, and each year <laughs> we gain more and more support. Uh, obviously, we're uh, uh, disappointed that uh, this bill includes, does include some money for Saudi Arabia, but I'm pleased that offering this bipartisan amendment with broad support on both sides of the aisle, uh, once again, we will seek to strip that money. The, the bill before us provides $115,000 and foreign aid for a country that has time and time and time and again proven that it doesn't deserve one cent of American taxpayers' dollars. Not only because Saudi Arabia is one of the wealthiest countries in the world, but also because it's not a partner with the United States and other nations in our efforts to combat terrorism. Saudi Arabia has a, a pretty poor record on a, a number of fronts. It's not just a poor record in, in joining with other allies around the world to combat terrorism. They have a pretty terrible record on human rights, pretty poor record on religious freedom, and they continue to support and participate in the Arab League's boycott of Israel. Now, 
Even recently, uh, there was an Arab League boycott meeting in Damascus. Saudi, the Saudi government continued to participate in that meeting. All of this despite Saudi Arabia's repeated promises to dismantle the boycott uh, and to support most favored nation uh, status for Israel. And Israel, of course, our, our closest and most important ally in the Middle East. Saudi Arabia continues to undermine the efforts that we are building uh, in the Middle East. Clearly, Saudi Arabia is not a country that's struggling to make ends meet. Saudi Arabia doesn't need financial support from other nations, and they certainly can't be considered a strong ally of the United States or the global war on terror. Last year, more than 300 members of the House supported this amendment. I'm uh, very, really looking forward to uh, continued broad bipartisan support for this amendment once again this year, and I'm really delighted once again to be working uh, with Mr. Weiner and Mr. Crowley and Ms. Berkeley in offering this amendment. I thank you uh, for yielding. Thank you. Reclaiming my time, perhaps the amendment really doesn't go far enough in the sense that to do something that really matters, there is a real concern that m many American ambassadors to Saudi Arabia are now, are now now out working for the Saudi government. And I have an amendment that we're trying to get through the Rules Committee to offer, and I know Mr. Lanton and us and are working on uh, asking uh, various groups to look into this. There are actually, I understand, CIA station chiefs, American CIA station chiefs who were station chiefs in Saudi Arabia that may be now working for the Saudis. The Saudis funded the madrasas up along the Pakistan-Afghan border. There were 15 Saudis on the aircraft. One of them went into the Pentagon and killed 30 people from my congressional district. The first person killed in Afghanistan was Michael Spahn, a CIA agent from my district, and because of the activities of the Saudis. The Saudis are funding anti-Semitic anti-Christian activities in some of the schools. This is Wahhabism. I've been kind of shocked. This is a milquetoast amendment. This is a weak amendment. There should be something really strong to get control of this Wahhabism that is spreading. So, uh, yeah, let's pass it, but I would hope the next time and we really do something that really can make a difference because this is dangerous. Had they not funded his madrasas, Frankly, maybe what took place on 9-11 would have, would have never taken place. With that, I yield back to bounce of my, my time. Gentleman yields back. Gentlewoman from New York is recognized. I'm pleased to accept the amendment from the gentlewoman from Nevada. Thank the gentlelady from New York. Gentleman from Nevada is recognized. Lady from New York. Gentleman from Nevada is recognized. Um, I want to thank the gentlewoman from New York and thank Mr. Wolf. It's nice to be on the same side of an issue for a change, and this is certainly one that I appreciate your support. Perhaps next year we could work on an amendment that will be even stronger than this. I quite agree with you. And with that, I yield back the balance of my time. The woman yields back. The questions on the adoption of the amendment. Those in favor, say aye. Those opposed, say no. The opinion of the chair, the ayes have it. The amendment is adopted.